steps, and there was a little chain in the pool, and the lights went out. And I remember going down there one time, and I heard something, and it was dark, and it was scary. And I sat there for a minute, and what do I do? And I turned the light on. And I didn't see anything different than before. So I kind of discovered <coughs> that it was okay to be in the dark and not be scared. We don't have to be afraid of the dark. Uh, I had a granddaughter when she was really little. She was afraid of the dark. And I took her into uh, a back room and I said, See everything here? Yeah. I said, I'm going to turn the light out. Uh-uh, she said. Don't turn the light out. Well, I said, it'll be okay. I'm going to turn the light out. You can talk to me, and I can talk to you. And I turned the light out. She goes, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> as, as the last time she said that, I flipped the light back on. I said, what are you scared of? Everything was just the same in the darkness as it was in the light. So we don't have to be afraid of the darkness. But there, there is, in the scripture, it talks about light and darkness. And Jesus is our light. And we need to look to him to be our light. And realize that when dark things happen, that generally comes from the devil. He tries to tell us things, get us into things, speak to us about things. Jesus is our light, and we can rely upon him to drive that darkness away. So let's look at Jesus as the light. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was not without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the waters and said, Let there be light. And there was light. And it was good. So, let's look at light as good. And realize Jesus is our light to direct us. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you today that you are our light. Drive away all darkness from us, we pray, and let us look to you as you shine your light to lead us and guide us and direct us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming down and let me speak to you this morning. Minor detail. <laughs> yes, it's just a minor detail. I'd like to pray for extra guidance when I come to church. So, uh, if I could go ahead and have uh, a couple of ushers to come forward, and we'll go ahead and do our regular eyes and offering here. And, uh, I wonder if my friend Francis didn't play the uh, altar <laughs>
and we pray that you will use them to work to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> and defeated 
the giant Goliath. That in itself is an amazing feat and an amazing story. And then, of course, later in life, as he approached becoming king, King Saul was after him, chased him, trying to kill him out of envy. And, of course, we know the story of David and Bathsheba and Uriah where even though he was a great man that defeated the giant, even though he was able to survive when being chased by Saul and David, here he finds himself committing adultery and murder. An amazing life King David had. An amazing person he was. But he was not perfect. The reason he was not perfect is very simple. He was human. Just like you and I. And so we as humans, as Christians, have our own issues which abound with us today. We have personal issues. You know, uh, we talked earlier about coming down with the cold, the flu, and now we have this, of course we have COVID, and we have this new disease, RSV. It might not be new, but it, the, this, this RSV saying is a new way of describing this big lung illness that comes across uh, many, many people. So we are not, just because we're Christians, we're not immune to things like that. We have Satan who's con continually trying to get us to do things which we know go against what God wants us to do. We also might have family issues. We have uh, maybe a spouse, children, uh, younger folks have parents that they have to deal with and we have to deal with. And sometimes family issues can be very troubling, very upsetting, and cause us great concern. Along with that, we might have church issues, spiritual issues. I can tell you that the universal church, the church of Jesus Christ, definitely has issues. Again, Satan's job is to come against us, to come against our families, to come against the church and cause great concern and problem and difficulty. I think of the United Methodist Church and the great problems they are having. To me, I can't understand sometimes the thinking of some people, be they Christian or non-Christian. I can't understand a denomination, a group of people that would do something that just so blatantly seems to go against what the Word of God says. And I can be here before you today, and I'm glad to tell you, I am glad to be a part of the Global Methodist Church which stands for God, for the scriptures, and for what he wants us to do as a denomination, as the people of God. Can I at least hear one amen this morning? Amen. 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 But with God as our light, salvation, and our fortress or stronghold, we can be bold and we can be fearless. As I talked to the children this morning, He is our light. As the scripture spoke of, I was <laughs> glad to hear Debbie's scripture from Jeremiah that she read this morning. It mentioned light. There seems to be a theme in our service today. God is our light. Darkness can be fearful, especially to younger folks as I talked to the children this morning. I know some adults 
that are fearful of darkness. But we have no reason to be afraid of darkness, be it spiritual darkness or literal darkness. Darkness is kind of like blindness. You can't see anything. You don't know where anything is. You don't know what to do, where to go. I remember early in life I worked for the Jack Edward Corporation, if you remember them. And I worked in their photo lab they, down in Clearwater, Florida. And uh, I was a technician that worked in the dark room. Now, in black and white dark rooms, you have little amber lights that you can kind of see. But in color photography, no light, everything's pitch black. Uh, light will actually ruin the negatives, ruin the photos if you let it in. So when I worked in the photo lab, they would take us in the light, in the, in the dark room, and we always had a shelf or a table, and we worked in bulk. We had humongous big rolls of paper, big rolls of negatives, and they would take us in the dark room and let us see everything. And they would have us, you know, work at this table, turn around, work at this machine, go over here where these supplies are at, go over where the door is at, so you can get a little bit familiar. Then they'd tell you, okay, close your eyes and do that. And you would work here, go over there, kind of stumble into stuff and bump into things. And you finally learned where everything is. And then they turned the lights out. And you couldn't open your eyes in. It, it wouldn't do any good. But you get used to the darkness. And you get used to where everything is. But as Christians, we don't get used to the darkness. We avoid the darkness. We shun the darkness. I'm here to tell you today that Jesus Christ, as the psalmist said, the light, He is our light. He shuns that darkness. If we will only turn to Him, He will cause that darkness to be gone and bring into our lives the lightness, the goodness of being a Christian, of walking in the light, of walking for God. And that is what we need to do. Psalmist David said, He is our light. He is our salvation. Can you remember the day that you were saved as a Christian? I do. An old youth camp years ago, with sawdust chips, saw chips on the floor, going down to that altar and kneeling to cry, realizing my sin and asking God to forgive me of my sin. The next day in school, I went to one of my friends and I said, hey, let me tell you, I got saved. He said, saved from what? I said, saved from sin. I was in a youth camp and I got saved. He says, I don't know what you're talking about. And the world doesn't know much about salvation. But I found out as, as I become saved, all of a sudden, I wanted to learn more about Scripture, about what the Bible said about being saved. What does the Bible tell me about being a Christian, about being saved? And I started to grow in that salvation. And as I become a, a teenager, and as I became a young adult, more and more and more as I went to church, as I was involved in youth groups and a, a gospel quartet and singing and going to places, I found out my life began to grow as a Christian. I, I, I'd like to 
tell you today a scripture that I talked about a little bit last week. And that is John chapter 10 and verse 10. It's one of my favorite scriptures. The thief comes to cheat, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and life more abundantly. And I still believe, and I've always believed, that the most abundant, the most joyful, the most peaceful, the most wonderful life you can live in this world is the life of a Christian. Living for Jesus is a wonderful thing. Living for Christ is a wonderful thing. Let's live that abundant life. David says, He is our fortress. The scripture that I read this morning didn't quite use that word, but that it's the same word for fortress, stronghold, fortress. Well, the church is our fortress. Those of you who are here this morning, I trust that in a time of need, you call your friends in the church. Pray for me. Do this for me. Help me. This morning in our worship service, we listed quite a few names. And we prayed for those people. Why? Because the church is our fortress. Our place that we go when we're in need and we need help. Jesus Christ is our fortress. I trust that you have a regular prayer life and devotional life. I mentioned earlier that I began to have a, a love for Scripture, and I've always had a love for Scripture, and I like to read the Scripture because it speaks to me. The Scripture talks to me about things in my life, about things that I do, about things that He wants me to do, about things that He wants with my life. The Lord is our fortress. And he speaks to us through his word. He speak to us, speaks to us through prayer. He speaks to us, hopefully, when the preacher uh, gives his sermon and preaches his message. That should speak to your heart and tell you something. Along with that, our home should be our fortress. You ever, yesterday was a good example Terrible outside, raining like crazy, cold. What happens when you go inside? It's warm. It's cozy. It's friendly. There's no wind battling you. know there's no rain beating down on your head. And hopefully those that share that home with you are kind and gentle and peaceful and speak love to your hearts. Jesus is our fortress. And he has given us a home to be thankful for, a church to be thankful for, people that we love and share our Christian lives with and talk with and pray with and be with. Tuesday nights we're going to have hot dog supper. I hope all of you come. You have fellowship together. You share your lives together. You talk about what's going on in your life and what we're doing. I'm here to tell you, he's our fortress in many, many, many ways. So, what do we do with him being our life, him being our salvation, him being our fortress we be bold, we be brave, we do not fear the devil, we do not fear the world, we do not fear what is going on, we do not fear because our country is in trouble, and trust me, our country, as you know, is in trouble. 
but be bold, be brave, do not fear, because He is our light, He is our salvation, He is our fortress. His light will destroy all manner of darkness. His salvation defeats Satan every time if we let him. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, he speaks to our lives and directs us and guides us away from the darkness and into his marvelous light. As the psalm says, his fortress keeps away our worldly enemies that would seek to destroy him. Have you made him your light today? Have you made him your salvation? If you have not made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, I would like to talk to you about that. I trust today that you have. But let us be bold, be brave, and have no fear, because God is on our side. And so this morning, before our benediction, I encourage you to sing with me our hymn of dedication.